Hello and welcome to Currency Point presented by me, Evan Lucas for FP Markets. As always, please have a very good read through of the disclaimer on screen. Everything in this video is general in nature, none of it is relied upon as any form of personal advice. FP Markets does not know your personal scenario, nor your personal financial goals, and therefore none of it is relied upon as any form of advice at all, it is just general in nature only. There is still one game in town, and that's the US dollar. The foot on the throat is still well and truly there. And I don't think it should be any sort of thought that it's going to change. If you have a look at the Fed Fund's implied expectations over the next period, leading into the end of the year, so it goes all the way up to the 19th, which is the next or the final FOMC meeting of this calendar year, it's sitting at 139 basis points above where we are. We're at 164, 464 basis points and we're at 325 or realistically more likely between 300 and 325. That's a long way. That means they are absolutely locked in according to the market for November at 75 bips and you're near enough to a certainty to get something similar in the final of the year. That is why the flow towards the USD is absolutely unwavering and not going to change anytime soon. If you look at Euro dollar at 97 cents, parity looks a long way away. And even if there was a shock in the US, I don't think it's going to get back there anytime soon. And that's even with you know the EU having inflation at 9.9%, rate rises coming. The overall outlook for the European Union is very, very bleak. And I think that is part of the story. You then look across the ditch and sterling, wow, that is hurting in all forms of ways. Despite the final settlement down after the tumultuous issues that happened from the UK government, that instability is still there. It is very clear that the trust government is on its final legs and will probably fall over. So wanting to invest into sterling at 10.1% inflation and economy faltering and a government under pressure is a very tough ask. And again, it's why the USD is motoring ahead. Finally, let's have a look at two others. Have a look at the Aussie at the moment. Aussie US is under pressure for actually more fundamental reasons, which is nice to talk about. The fact that the RBA has got a slightly less hawkish, it's still hawkish, but a slightly less hawkish scenario than the rest, that is very much leading to the idea that the Aussie is under pressure. And there is even a suggestion that after November and what will probably be a 25 basis point rate rise, it could be the last one. There is signs that the Aussie economy is starting to feel the pinch of the rate rises that we've had. And for that reason, it's not gonna move any further. So watch that space, it's under pressure. Then you look at something like, something with US dollar and dollar yen. Dollar yen, 11 consecutive days of appreciation. It is chasing 150 and it is not going to slow down. The BOJ tried to get in at 147, where did that go? At 145, that's gone too. So at 150, is that the absolute line in the sand? That is the question that everyone is asking. 